I, uh, I want you to p picture a scenario with me in, in your mind and uh, imagine maybe, maybe go back 10 years. Imagine when my, my sons, both of them were very little or, or littler. And um, imagine us going out to a fast food restaurant after, after service. We all get our meals, but uh, I finish mine before everyone else. We're just sitting around the table and we're visiting in this fast food restaurant, having a good conversation. And as we're sitting there and we're talking and we're visiting, I reach over to take a couple of fries from my son, Jacob. Even at a young age, his response would be to grab my wrist and say, those are mine. But let's work with that for a moment, shall we? My son, Jacob, doesn't understand that I am the source of the French fries that he has. Just five minutes earlier, I, his father, went up to the counter in this fast food restaurant. I pulled money out of my pocket. I gave it to the kid at the counter. I, I got the French fries for my son and my wife and my other son and myself. Now, he's eating those fries and he's forgotten that the reason that he has French fries is because of his father. Not only am I the source of his French fries, but being dad, I have the power to reach over when he was little to take those fries. In fact, if I wanted to, I could have gone up to the counter and said, here's a hundred dollars. I want you to bury my son in French fries. I could bury him in French fries or I could take his French fries away. He has forgotten or doesn't understand that. The other issue that my son doesn't understand while we're sitting there in this fast food restaurant is I don't really need his French fries. If I wanted, I could go back to the counter myself and I could order for myself as many French fries as I wanted. What I want is my son's willingness to share his French fries with me, his father. God has taken us out to eat. He has blessed us. He has given us French fries. Some of us have a lot of fries. Some of us have some different shaped fries. But all of us have fries. And God sits down and he desires to fellowship with us. And he reaches over to get a few of the blessings that he has given to us. And we pull back and we say, those are mine. And God looks at us and he says, don't you understand that I am the source of everything you have? Don't you understand that I can take it all away? Or I can give you so much that you would be buried in it. Don't you understand that I don't really need what you have? I have my own. God wants you to share and give, not because he is hurting or needy, but because he has modeled in who he is, giving. And he wants that to be passed on to his children. For God so loved the world that he gave. And throughout the Bible, you will find that God is always giving. And he is very interested this morning in your response. He is waiting and watching to see how we respond when he says, okay, I want, I want some of those back. Or I, I want you to pass that on to the other kid at the table. Let, let him have some fries. I want you to see a scripture with me from 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Read this in your own Bible. We're going to pick up in verse 10. This is David, and he's standing before an entire group of, of the children of Israel, and they are worshiping together. And I want you to hear what David, the king, says. David. Praise the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, 
Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are aliens and strangers in your sight, as were all our forefathers. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. O Lord our God, as for all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name, it comes from your hand and all of it belongs to you. Now, in your own Bible, I I think in verse 11, you should underline the phrase, everything is yours. And then in verse 14, that phrase, everything comes from you. And then that last phrase in the last verse in 16, all of it belongs to you. You see, David understood that everything comes from God. Everything. Everything. In verse 12, David said that in God's hands are strength and power. David knew that God is sovereign, God is in control, and God can take away our french fries or he could give us more. This passage makes me think about when when my boys were little. And one of the things that I would do for both of them is it would come around Christmas time. They're, you know, six years old and and dad would would give them money to go and buy a Christmas present for their mother. And they would buy very interesting things for their mom. And every single time that Jacob and, and Jonathan would go and buy a present for their mom that I had given them money to go and get for her, they, every single time, Shannon would ooh and awe over the gift But she did not really care about the gift. She didn't need it. You see, God is not impressed by what it is that we give to him. Do you think that you could write a check out to the church this morning that would just blow God away? Why don't we take a moment and do that right now? The reality is God does not need a thing that we have, but he loves it that we would give it to him. David understood this. God is the source of everything. You have nothing in your hands that is not a direct blessing from God. You may have worked for that house, but God is the one that gave you the health so that you could go and work for the house that you have. God has given you everything. Look at your sermon outline, and I want, you to, I want you to see three things that are very important about God. Number one, I want to talk to you about God's power, his ability to give. We, we ask ourselves, does God have the ability to give us what we need? The answer from Genesis 1-1 to the end of the book of Revelation is a very clear yes. That that passage that we read in 1 Chronicles 29 is very clear. God can give to you and I what we need. In God's hands are strength and power to give to all. God has the ability to give to you. Back when I was in Bible college, one of my my buddies, a very good buddy, David Soper, he took a class that... Typically was offered only to music students, and the class is called hymnology. 
Now, I, I never took the class, but David told me all about the class. He said you would study in this class the great hymns of the church, the, the authors of the hymns, the, the backgrounds of the hymns. And he said that one of the assignments during every single week of the class was to memorize a hymn every week. And so in this discipline of memorizing the hymn, uh, the students would come in every Thursday morning, 10 a.m., and they would pull out their legal pads. Nobody was talking, not even the professor, and there was just silence as all of the students sat to write from memory the hymn that they had committed to memorize that week. And David told me that it was not an uncommon thing in that hymnology class. While everybody was quiet and writing these tremendous words of these old hymns, all of a sudden, you would be able to hear from somewhere in the room some sniffling. Because all of a sudden, as they were writing about the greatness of God, they understood who he was and what he was doing. And David told me about the day that it actually happened to him. He, he was writing these words, Thy grace all sufficient shall be my supply. And even when he told me the story, he got choked up because he remembers thinking and putting his pen down and just realizing that there, there is nothing that an all-sufficient God with an abundance of grace cannot do for me. You, you need to know, just as an aside, that the old hymns are important I grew up on them. I, I sang them as a child, and many of the hymn writers knew that God is an all-gracious, all-powerful, all-sufficient God to meet all of our needs. And our God has the power to give you everything that you need for today. Second thing about God that I want you to, to learn or know is that God's has provision. He has this willingness to give. He's willing to give to you today what it is that you need. And what that means is that anything that God asks of you right now, he has already given you the resources for. Now, would you send your child or your grandchild to the grocery store for a gallon of milk without giving them the money to buy the milk? Would God ask you to go through a trial or a difficulty or a dark period in your life without having given you the grace and the wisdom and the discernment and the power and the strength to not make it? No. God will not leave you. He will not abandon you. He provides. And if you have been a follower of Jesus Christ, the only thing you need to do is turn this way and look back. Because you have seen it a thousand times before in your life, how he's done it for you. You see, our problem is that we want resources that we don't need. God gives you today what you need for today, nothing more. If you asked me if I was ready today to die a martyr's death, probably not. I'm not ready for that. I, I don't need that today. Hoping that doesn't happen today. Besides, our elders meeting is not until Thursday night. But if I need that supplied in my life, God would grant to me in that moment what is needed in my life, but not before. He gives to me today what I need for today. It really is a matter of trusting God. When God supplied for his children in the desert after they left Egypt, he gave them manna to eat. His children wanted to store it up for a rainy day. But the problem was that wormy, moldy manna isn't very appetizing. God only gave what they needed for the day, nothing more. And he does the same for you, and he does the same for me, and he doesn't need to give us any more than that. 
also write down this. God's partnership, his reason to give. Why does God give to us anyway? That, how, how about this question? If you were God and you had all of his resources, would you be as giving as God? I don't think so. David understood this. In, in, in 1 Chronicles 29, verses 14, verse 16, we see that, that God gives to us so that we can in turn give it back to him and to others because God is in partnership with us and he wants us to be like him and he is a giving God. You see, you either believe this about God or you don't. You will know that God can give to you, that he is willing to give to you, and that he wants to give to you because he wants you to bless other people, or you're going to see it in an entirely different way. There's another part of this that I really want you to see. There's another verse, and it's from the New Testament. If you don't like looking just at Old Testament verses, look with me at Matthew chapter 25, beginning in the 31st verse from your own Bible. I want to read to you this passage of scripture. It says this, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. You did not invite me in. I needed clothes. You did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison. You did not look after me. And they will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. You see, my Bible teaches me that my, give, my getting to heaven does not have as much to do with my theology as it does with my understanding of giving. Four observations as we close this whole thing out. Number one, we are accountable to God for what we do with his blessings. That is a guarantee. When he blesses you, when he gives you french fries, you are accountable for what you do with those things. Secondly, giving to others is giving to God. When you and I see another person who is hurting or needy and then we give to them, the scripture teaches we are indeed giving to God. That is how this partnership that I talked about works. God gives to us and he gives to us many times so that we can give to others and bless them. Third, not Giving to others who are needy is not giving to God. Isn't it interesting that God would so vicariously live through man that he would say he was the one that we saw in need? 
God says that when we withhold from others, we are withholding from him. And finally, we are incomplete without each other. I am always amazed. God gives me certain gifts that he doesn't give to others and that the gifts that I have would be the exact kind of need that someone has in their life. You see, God has created us and he wills that that you and I would be givers. You have gifts in your life that I need. I have gifts in my life that you need. And our world is so full of, of, of this attitude that we talked about last week. What's yours is mine, and I'm going to take it. But we live by another standard as followers of Jesus Christ. So I want to give you an opportunity to do something real. Inside of your bulletin are these little cards. Grab the card. It's called the Trust Account Transfer. And at the top right, you will see where it says from the account of. And I want you to write your name up there. This is coming from you and your account. Then down on the bottom left of this card, I want you to to write who it is that you're going to do what you're going to do for, write someone else's name. And last week I, I gave you a litany of things that you could do. Maybe there's a, a young couple that you could go babysit for. Maybe there's an elderly person that you could go visit. Maybe there's someone that has a financial need that you know that you could particularly meet. Maybe there's somebody that needs a ride. Maybe there's somebody that you know that you could just visit and lift their spirits. You know people with needs. You do. So then on the bottom of the right side, I want you to write exactly what it is that you are going to do for that person. Let them know how it is that you're going to help them this particular week. And, and if, you're, if you're struggling, think about the prayer request list. There's somebody on that list that, that you could do something for. I want you to go and I want you to do that this week. Now, you need to give to God this week by giving to someone else. Maybe that person is right in this room this morning. Maybe they're sitting here in church. You give them the card as you leave. Let them know what you're going to be doing. What good is it to hear a sermon and not do something about it? Here's your chance.